Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at genetic profiling and in particular we're going to look at two ways that we can do genetic profiling using SMPs or SNPs and STRs. Uh, so we're going to talk about STRs or short tandem repeats and single nucleotide polymorphism or SNPs. Um, so starting off with the STRs and they don't have a cool way to pronounce them. Um, so these are small sections of DNA, and so this is in the non-coding DNA. So we're not talking about the DNA found in the gene, we're talking about the DNA found between genes, or the DNA that's cut out um, in that uh, process of polypeptide synthesis, um, so in the exons. Now these um, short tandem repeats are pretty much just that. They're a section of that DNA that has base pairs, and we're usually looking about two to six, um, that repeat a number of times. And so this repetition is different in different people. So for example, we've got a, um, an example of an STR here for two different people. So you can see that there is a, this GTG repeats three times in person one, one, two, three, and then five times in person two. Uh, now these are random uh, or caused by random mutations um, and we know a whole heap of different places where these short tandem repeats occur. So what we can do is we can look at a number of different places and that might be 20, it might be 50, uh, and we can actually start to build a profile of a person and see how closely they're related to another person. So an example here is this table, and I got this from Family Tree DNA, which is a commercial site that does DNA testing. Um, and it's looking at these uh, short tandem repeats at a number of different bases, uh, and particularly on the Y chromosome. Uh, so this is the designation for each of these positions where these repeats occur, and this is how many repeats there are at that particular state, at the particular point. So for this one, at th uh, 0.393, there's 12 repeats, 12 repeats, 14 repeats, 13 repeats, etc. So what they can do is they can look uh, between individuals. So for example, this these are all people that have the same surname. This person's been in the US for five generations. Uh, this person's a recent arrival. Um, but if you have a look at where these, uh, at these repeat positions, you can see that the number of repeats that they have is the same. Um, so this is a 12, for t uh, 12 out of 12 match. Um, now if you're five generations separated from someone, it's possibly unlikely that you'll have a 12 for 12 match, but maybe if you're looking at uh, 50 repeats or 100 of these um, positions, uh, then you might have a 49 out of 50 or a 98 out of 100 or something like that, um, so that you can show that fairly close lineage. Uh, then what happens is a statistical analysis gets run, um, working out the probability that these two people are related. So if you've got, uh, say, 98 out of 100 um, of your STRs the same as another person, then you're probably reasonably closely related. Um, when these people uh, in Houston, so same continent, different town, and Brazil, different continent, um, have only three or four of the same numbers of repeats at these particular points. Um, so the statistical analysis would say that these people probably aren't related. Uh, some of the benefits of using STRs for this gene profiling is that you'd only need to look at the genome at particular points. Rather than sequencing the whole genome, you just look at these little points. The problem is that it takes longer, and it used to be quicker, but it, now it's longer, um, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, there's more noise, so the process of breaking these STRs up uh, can mean that you get false positives. Uh, and because mutations are fairly common in these um, positions, a person could have a mutation that's different to, say, their parents, um, so that uh, they, they occur a lot. Um, so STRs are good for uh, things like uh, determining relationships, like paternity uh, cases, or for forensic profiling. Uh, so if there was DNA left at a crime scene, you could look at the STRs. Um, but it's not good for determining relationships between people and how uh, genes are passed on or spread through populations. 
For that we have SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphism. Uh, and what this means is quite um, literally what it says, single, so it's one particular point, nucleotide, one nucleotide, and polymorph just means many types. Um, so here we've got three different people, and you can see that their DNA is all the same, except for these two point SNPs. Um, so here we've got a um, GC swap, and here we've got a TA swap. So these are two SNPs where there is a single nucleotide that has multiple forms, T and A, G and C. Um, individually, this doesn't tell us a lot. Um, in fact, it's somewhere around uh, you need three different SNPs to give us the same amount of information as an STR. However, the SNPs are much more common than STRs, so you get about 15 times as many of them as um, the STRs. Uh, and we've mapped thousands of them. So in the um, Y chromosome uh, itself, there are 100,000 known SNPs to actually look at. Um, so you get a much more comprehensive genetic picture. Now the downside of this is that you need to map the whole genome to do this, um, which is only now possible because of this next generation sequencing, which basically just means uh, sequencing techniques that are fairly recent uh, or modern. Um, and it gives us the benefit of being able to trace the gene, so trace exactly where these mutations came from through a population. So you can look at um, people from different continents, you can look at uh, modern people and ancient people and use statistical analysis there. It's complicated stuff, but computers do it so we don't have to worry too much. Um, and we can look at that analysis between people in that way. Another cool emerging uh, thing in SNPs is pharmacogenetics. And this is looking at a person's genome and tailoring treatment to them. Uh, this is because there are known SNPs that affect our metabolism of drugs in different ways. So if you do a, a gene profiling through SNPs, you can actually work out um, a cancer drug, for example, that isn't going to be of benefit to somebody that has those particular SNPs. In this video, we've looked at short tandem repeats being uh, sections of DNA in the non-coding section that repeat a number of times using a statistical analysis to work out how closely people are related. And we've looked at single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs where there is a single nucleotide that changes. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.